Welcome all to Lecture 18. We are continuing from Lecture 17, where we were looking at the development and control of emotional expressions. So we looked at primary emotions, which was fear, anger, um, and sadness. We looked at some secondary or complex emotions, which looked at embarrassment and the children being able to understand um, though their feelings for them to recognize uh, such a complex emotion such as embarrassment. Today we continue with that where we say that embarrassment is the simplest of self-conscious emotions. So the reason why they feel uh, this embarrassment is because they are aware of themselves. They are self-conscious beings now. And it will not emerge until the child can recognize himself. So once the child begins to recognize and understand themselves, they are able to become self-conscious and uh, experience more complex emotions. Only toddlers who display self-recognition become noticeably embarrassed uh, when there is lavish praise or when they are requested to show off in front of strangers, like this boy closing his eyes. We've seen many children do that when they ask to do something in front of people. Because they are self-conscious of themselves and they understand, they may not likely be comfortable to do certain things in front of certain people or they may feel a certain way um, because they now know who they are. We look at the self-evaluative emotions such as shame, guilt, and pride may require both self-recognition and understanding of rules, of standards, or evaluating one's conduct. By the age of three, when children are uh, better able to evaluate their performances as being good or bad, they begin to show clear signs of pride by smiling or applauding when they do something good. Or when they and when they succeed at a difficult task, um, when they succeed at a difficult task and uh, they feel uh, shameful about it, or when they are unable to succeed at diff uh, difficult tasks or they fail, you'll see they often have a downward gaze, or they slump their posture, or their face goes into like a sad mode because they're unable to accomplish a certain thing, and this shows that they now understand their behavior in terms of good or bad or their performance in terms of good and bad and how to regulate their emotions towards those type of performances. Parents can clearly influence a child's experience and expression uh, of self-evaluative emotions. So the parent has a very big impact on how children display their emotions in the environment. Critical mothers, critical means those who are constantly nagging their children or they say things like, uh, they say harsh things or they say that's not good enough, you need to do better. So critical mothers tend to have uh, children who display high levels of shame after failure. Why? Because they know that they will get some sort of harsh comment because of failing, so they automatically feel shame. And they have less pride after they have succeeded. Why they have less pride? Because they know that the parent will still be critical even though they prospered and were successful. Okay, so this is an overview of early emotional um, development. We have the ages, we have the emotional expressions or regulations that take place within those ages, and what is the emotional understanding? Okay, so you guys can have a look at that, and it's what we went through. Um, it's a more of uh, a simple breakdown and understanding between these age groups. So we now look at a very important uh, part or area of the section and we look at attachment. How do infants become attached? So it happens through synchronized routines that contribute to attachment by enabling an infant to learn about his caregiver and vice versa. So attachment happens when the caregiver learns about the child and the child learns about the caregiver. As the infant interacts with a responsive caregiver, so one who is understanding the attention that the child needs and responding to the needs and the emotions of the child, the child learns that this person, um, the child learns this is how this person is like and this is how they can regulate their, uh, the attention towards their caregiver. The caregiver becomes more skilled at interpreting the child's or the baby's signal and adjusts uh, his or her behavior to respond accurately to the child's needs. We'll look at the growth of primary attachments, okay? 
So Rudolf Schaffer and Peggy Emerson says that babies go through the following phases before they become emotionally attached to a caregiver. These phases are very important as they come up in tests and exams. So please be aware of these uh, primary attachment phases. First is the asocial phase, which happens between zero and six weeks, where infants are somewhat asocial, and uh, there are many kinds of social or non-social stimuli that produce favorable reactions uh, to produce any kind of protest. So anything that you may do to the child, a loud noise or um, carrying them awkwardly may cause them to cry or be angered or have fear. By the end of this period, infants are beginning to show a preference for certain social stimuli, such as a smiling face. So they prefer someone smiling at them rather than someone being angry at them. The phase of indiscriminate attachment takes place between six weeks and even six or seven months. Here, infants clearly enjoy the human company and it's somewhat indiscriminate. So here they smile at other people uh, and they smile at other objects such as puppets or teddy bears and those kind of things. And they reserve their biggest grins for familiar faces. And they are more quickly to be soothed by their regular caregivers, but they do also enjoy the attention from just about anybody in their in the environment. Then there is the specific attachment phase. This is where they look for a specific caregiver and they attach to that person specifically. This happens between seven to nine months. Infants begin to protest when they are separated from a particular individual, for example, the mother. Here they are able to crawl um, and uh, like to stay close to the mom, greeting her warmly when she returns. And they become somewhat wary of strangers. So here they are now able to identify who is the stranger and who is the main caregiver. And this uh, uh, phase, the specific attachment phase, is the formation of secure attachment, where attachment figures become a secure base for exploration. So when they know that they have established um, their main caregiver and they know who it is, they feel much safer to do things and wander around knowing that uh, this main caregiver is there for them to come back to. The phase of multiple attachments happens between 18 months and onwards. Within weeks of forming their initial attachments, most infants become attached to other people in their in immediate environment, such as the micro environment, and this, uh, the, which is the micro and uh, uh, meso environment. And this uh, is attachment to fathers, siblings, grandparents and even baby sisters, uh, babysitters. So these are attachments that happen within the immediate environment. And then we also have some influential theories of attachment and this is where we end today's lecture. So we look at the psychoanalytic theory and what it offers. So it looks at I love you because you feed me and this relates to Freud's psychosexual theory. Remember when they attach to a certain uh, object or whatever they feel love. The learning theory is rewardingness that leads to love. If I do good behavior, if I behave in a certain way, I will receive love. The cognitive development theory, to love you, I must know that you'll always be there. So they cognitively display that their main caregiver will always be there by their side. And so that is why they always emanate this love um, and affection towards the main caregiver. And the, and the ethnological theory, remember this is more of the biological theory, perhaps I was born to love. So children are automatically born to love rather than to hate and those kind of things. And it comes naturally for them to have uh, an affection towards someone or to the, towards their main caregiver. So in the upcoming lectures, uh, we'll be looking at more theories of attachments and some experiments that were done with children um, regarding attachment. Thank you and I hope you all enjoyed today's lecture.